you are so blah 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 blah. Then why you single? Why you single? Why everybody everywhere got pretty girl but you single? You know, but then like, like you must be the problem. Do yeah. people say that? Welcome to another episode of Man Explains. Sonia, we're with you. And today, we're talking about red flags, but not what you're thinking. Is being too single a red flag is the question here today. With me, I've got Q and Nick. Please go ahead, introduce yourselves to our audience, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Q and I'm a creative at Yugo Watch, which is also a sister brand of Clarities. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm a creative by myself. <laughs> And it ended there. Yeah. Okay. That's it, that's it. <laughs> okay. So let's break the ice and start with how long have you been single? <sighs> let's start with Nick. All right. Uh, I've been uh, single for eight years. Wow. Eight years? Uh, I've only had one relationship in my life. And when was that in like, it's like was it JC school? Army. Or, okay, okay. okay. Um, if you're talking about my last official relationship, it would be five to six years ago. Okay. But the last person I dated was two months ago. So you're actively, mm. you're dating? I'm single. Yeah, you're single no. now, no. but you're, you're in the dating scene, <laughs> yes, 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 kind yes, of, am, right? Yeah. Okay, Nick, what about you? Like, are you actively dating or uh, asking people out? Recently, not really. La. I signed a contract, right, to be single for a year. Eh. You, you signed with <laughs> right, For content. Yeah, for content. <laughs> like, there's an agency that was like, you want to be single for a year for us? I was like, uh, it's not like anything changes my life. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and what's the outcome of that? I'm still single. <laughs> no, I mean like what, what what are they trying to achieve with It's like a dating you? agency. Right. Yeah, okay. So I'm single to like be part of it. And you haven't met anyone that intrigued you along the way that you were highly considering dating? Highly considering yeah. no. Uh, no, not not at the moment. Okay. There have been people along the way. Yeah. Yeah. But that's about it. But it, yeah, we'll dive deeper later. Okay, okay. Q, what about you? You said that you dated. Mm. Two months ago. Mm. So what went down with that and why are you single now? I think generally, um, every time I date people, I end up self-sabotaging myself. Oh okay, no. I went that deep real quick. But no, it's fine. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. love deep conversations Let's start with here. You. <laughs> so it's a recent discovery that I self-sabotage my connections with people because yeah. I tend to like run away before someone else runs away. Okay. Or like if things are not Going well. Going well or I can find certain deal breakers, I would kind of like, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you, you feel like you look at the deal breakers and you look at yes. you know, specific things that you're unhappy about with the person? I think it happens subconsciously. Yeah. Um, and also, I think it's triggered because my last relationship was an unhealthy one. Okay. So I ignore all the red flags and then um, it led to like, serious shit mm. which is like anxiety a bit of like depression symptoms and that's why today I think I have that tendency mm. but I'm healed guys I'm healed I'm okay, okay. okay. I'm, everyone I'm okay <laughs> all right. I'm alright no and you know what it's okay to not be okay also <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. along the way yeah. I mean relationships have an effect on us that we cannot explain mm. sometimes like you know when you argue I can yeah. be a total psycho or like have a meltdown and stuff and my friends don't necessarily see that mm. or my colleagues don't see that right yeah. okay so Nick for you yeah. do you ever think about the settling down goal at the end of the day? Like, do you ever think, yeah, you know, I want to find someone and I want to be in a relationship someday? I feel like I want to find someone but I don't feel like it's a need. I feel like it's not really a priority in life. I always think about like my end goal, right? Okay. Like my ideal life, right? Like I cannot picture someone there. Why? Like I just imagine like a house, then after a dog and then after that it's like a man cave <laughs> looking thing. Okay. Yeah, but like do I want a partner? Yes. But like it's not a need. Like, I don't need to have it to achieve like whatever goals that I have in life. Okay, so then let me let me ask you this question, a bit of a side note here. When you experience things and when you travel, for example, do you have a tendency to want to share that moment with someone? Like, or when you eat something really delicious, you're like, like, you know, you want to share it with someone, like, ah. oh, this is so good. Or have you ever felt that way? That's why we have Tinder. Okay, for you, Q, um, you know, you talk about previous relationships mm. and being hurt and all that. Do you still feel like eventually you want a life partner to settle down with? Is that also part of your goal? Yes. I think I'm the opposite of Nick. Right. Um, I can see myself being together with someone. And I think in my most ideal scenario, I am growing old with a partner. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think it has always been my greatest desire to have that. Not mm. because, like, I can't be alone. But I just think, like, it would be very fun to do life with someone. I don't disagree, actually. I I mean, I've been an only child, like, growing up. Mm. I never had 
many, I guess, friends or anyone to talk to. So I was typically always talking to myself. Mm. Maybe that's why I keep on like bouncing from relationship to relationship. Mm. I don't know. I'm the complete opposite. Non-stop. Of you guys. Almost non-stop. Why? Let's okay, but the thing is, right, I don't plan for it. Mm. Like, I always, like, after a relationship ends, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be single for a while. Mm. And then, suddenly, this guy shows up. Like, I don't ever ask for it or manifest it. Wow. Or like, oh, please, give me a guy. No, they just show up. <laughs> the universe just delivers. Just gives me men. I don't mm. know why. <laughs> like, uh, I have no idea. Look in the mirror, maybe you'll find out oh, why. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. The Really, the thing is, it's also a choice whether you want to get into a relationship. Mm, you can sure. just date what, right? Mm. Yeah. But I find that once I start dating and I really enjoy this person's company, I just like, I'm going to take a step and go right in. Mm. That's like my personality. So mm. you, you won't be guarded at all? Like, do you feel you're quite an open person? I think I'm quite an open person. While I have dated and been in many relationships, I can safely say that none of them were emotionally or physically abusive or mm. traumatic or anything. Like, you know, okay, mm. relationships, they end. And some of them end badly. But for most of my relationships, I think I still remember them for like the good times. Mm. It, it didn't end on like a terrible note that I was scared about. Mm. Blessed. For, yeah. So so when you date, do you always now think I'm about... being interviewed, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, ahead, the, the me, producer in me. me is screaming. <laughs> Please, go yeah, ahead. So yeah. when you date... Do you tend to think of the long term or you just go with the flow and if it ends, it ends? So I used to think of the long term. Mm. I used to always think like, okay, this guy checks all my boxes. Um, I think I can see him like meeting my parents. I think I can see him like being my, I don't know, like marrying this guy in the future and all that. But um, after my first very serious relationship of like four years that didn't work out. And then by the way, I'm good luck Chuck because he found his wife like eight months later. He married a girl like in a year. And it has happened to all my ex-boyfriends, which I mentioned on, on the show same. before. Really, same? All your exes? Yeah. I mean, they all got, they like, all found dated, like their... Yeah, like legit. Like everybody that date me, right, next guy, right, marry, confirm. <gasps> For sure, yeah, oh like, man. Like I have, I know at least like 20 girls. Tw 20, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. 20 girls that got married after dating after me, you? Yes. I think you just found your niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a matchmaking service. You just found your niche. Oh my god, yeah. offer your service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can earn money. You can date, earn, yeah. yeah. Hey, if you date me, Idea. right, you can, you, marry, find your, you can marry your love of your life. Mm, let's think about that. Yeah. Okay, but Q for you. I mean, as a woman, I hate to bring this up, but do you ever worry about your biological clock? I think when I was in my early 20s, yes. Um, because I wanted kids back then. Yeah. I think now it has changed. Mm. Yeah, recent years, um, I am reconsidering whether I actually want kids. Mm, mm. Yeah, so I don't feel that pressure as, as much. But... I feel the pressure of finding the right person. Yeah. Only because everyone around me is getting married. They are like getting their house, their kids, I get you, you know. Yeah. And Especially then, around that like age group where uh, people start getting engaged yeah. and then you feel the pressure. Yeah. Don't you all think people get married too fast in Singapore? I feel like it's because of like the BTO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I, like in uni, right? People get together like one year and then they apply BTO. And then because of the BTO, then for the next five years, yeah. they're together. Then they just live in together. Right. Like, I feel like there's this pressure yeah. on us like to like, oh, faster, chop, chop. Yeah. And actually, I, I feel like recently, I've heard a lot of stories of people forfeiting their BTO. Yeah. Same. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had an acquaintance BTO'd with a girl and then he found out she was having an affair. <gasps> Boom. They broke up and forfeited the whole thing. Mm. So it happens. Like, I think people just don't talk about it enough. Like, mm. you you feel constrained yeah. with all these things mm. when mm. it comes to relationships. Okay, so in regards to your biological clock question, so now it's just kind of a wait and see or... I'm okay to get married at a later age. Right. Yeah. But having kids, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, then I'm fine with it, I, I think. Yeah. I think, for now. I, yeah, same. So I yeah. feel you as well. Yeah. How about you? Do you ever feel like Eventually, you want to be a dad? <laughs> sorry, I cannot, hey, don't see, laugh. I cannot see Nick as a dad. I'm so sorry. Hey, so KG bad. says that I'll be a very good father. Sarah. No, you will be a good father, but I don't know whether I can see you as oh, a dad. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. I always feel like this question, right? It's not a question meant for one person. I always mm. feel like it's a question meant for a couple. Mm -hmm. So it depends on who I'm with. Then I'll decide like, oh, if I want kids. Mm. Yeah. But you know, there are some people whose life mission is to be like a parent. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I know people like that. Yeah, I think I think it's just like different priorities in life. Oh. Right. I just want to like entertain the world. So like it doesn't matter if like I have kids or not. Okay. So you intend to obviously be in this line for a long time. Yeah, forever. Continue doing what you do because you love it. Yeah. So do you think that that in itself also changes 
the whole dating game for you? Yeah, I think everything is about perspective. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's a lot easier to be, like, single and being in the media industry. I mean, you lose that family aspect of, like, stuff. But, like, um, it's a lot easier to, like, let's say, I need to go overseas for, like, six months to a show. Okay. You know, mm. stuff like that, right? Coming from, yeah. Like, you don't have commitments or people to tie you down. Right. And then, like, oh, let's say if a show requires me to kiss someone else, then I don't have mm. someone that goes, like, oh, please, lah, baby, don't. <laughs> please. Actually, I've been through that before. Um with some of my exes and I think one of my exes actually got mad at me because of Joachim yeah. who's like a friend of, yeah. of all of us as well. So it is it is tough because you have to find the right partner that you it's not a hindrance. Like, you know, he's mm. not holding you back. He or she is not um, preventing you from achieving what you want to do but at the same time, also supportive of yeah. what you feel like achieving out there, mm. right? Okay, so in regards to that, um, you know, we're talking about the people that you're looking out for, the qualities that you look out for when you're dating. Q, do you have like a list the or list. a checklist where you're like, okay, the guy must be this, this, this and that? If I say no, I'm lying lah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I have a, a very brief list. Mm. Um, it's very standard, which okay. is like humour is important. I should be attracted to this person, physically attractive. So I you did. will not be a candidate on Love is Blind, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. And I think uh, someone that has a similar lifestyle, because I do work out. Yeah. yeah so I think, I, I like someone who's active. Yeah. Um, what else? Driven. I think mm. all these little things. And ideally, not someone who's emotionally unavailable. Right. Because that's going to be a tough mm. one, you know? Okay. Like, I don't want to be the chaser in the relationship. Yeah. yeah. Say, what if you start dating this person and, okay, this guy checks off most of your boxes. Mm. But along the way, you find out, like, oh, like, there are certain things about him that, you know, are red flaggy to you or, like, mm. you're not really a fan of. But you really like this person. Would you try and communicate and talk about it with yeah. this partner? So... The last guy. Oh, tell me. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready for the story. Here we go. <laughs> so, the last guy. Yeah. Um, we still liked each other at that point of time. Right. But if I were to bring in attachment styles, if you all know about it, mm. secure, avoidant, and anxious, right? I'm I'm more of an anxious person. Mm. And then he's more avoidant, which is like polar opposites. Right. We are quite compatible, actually. And every time we hang out, we have a lot of fun. Mm. It's just that one thing, which which we cannot work through. Cannot reconcile, yeah. At the moment. Mm. Yeah, we're friends now. Okay. And we do talk about it, like how it could have been. Mm. Which is quite sad, sad right? Yeah. It's quite sad because like everything checks off, but the one thing that's wrong is a big thing. Mm. He might not be someone who wants to settle down. Because maybe he's more, like like I said, emotionally unavailable mm. or he sees marriage as just a piece of a paper. A construct, mm. yeah. Yes. However, I see marriage as like a promise. Mm. So, yeah, that's the thing that, that has happened which answers your question. Yeah. La. So, mm. yeah. Nick, so for you, um, you said, you know, you've been single for eight years. Yeah. In that period of eight years, do your friends constantly like tease you about it? Like, joke about you being single or do you make self-deprecating jokes about yourself being single? Oh, yeah, 100%. I think part of my branding on online is that I'm a single person. <laughs> okay. Like, like, there's, like, so many jokes about it and, like, a lot of people just attack me for it also, actually. Right. Like, I think a lot of the classic Singaporean mindset is, like, oh, faster get married, faster have kids, you know, contribute right. to society and all that. And then after people are like, oh, if uh, you are so blah, 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 then why are you single? Why are you single? Why everybody, everywhere got pretty girl but you single, you know? But then, like, like, you must be the problem. Do yeah, people say yeah, that? Yeah, must be the problem. But then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, la, I'm the problem. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, wait, hold not. up. But how do you deal with this then? Because I know that you're such a bubbly, fun person mm. on the outside and I always see you in like, you know, fun situations, yeah, 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 parties, yeah. blah, 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 online, all that. But beneath that, do you ever feel like, okay, I want to actually think about this. How do I deal with, you know, certain comments and stuff like that out there. Mm, I think to get it out of the way, I do want a relationship. Yeah. Like, like, it's not like I don't want a relationship yeah. or, or like whenever a girl comes up, like, yeah. you know, but it's more like, I don't see it as a, as a necessary thing necessity right now. Necessity right now or like a priority, you know, so I'm happy doing whatever I am. So like, I just like ignore them. Mm. Obviously, there are girls that break my heart mm -hmm. and there are girls that, oh, reject me and then I feel bad about it. I feel sad. But like overall, it's still okay lah, you know. Mm. Like they can say what they want lah. 
Right. Mm. Yeah. There are many things you can't control about what people say anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do fit all the qualities on Q's list. <laughs> I mean, just in case that situation doesn't it will not work, work out. out. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Why will it not work out? I think we we our personalities are too strong. Okay. Like, we're too, I, I feel like, <laughs> He's like we're I too strong-headed. Okay. Individually. Uh, okay. Wait, you have something to Don't say? Don't say no, no, like no. you want to. <laughs> Don't pretend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But when it comes to the dating game, do you have any dating rules like for yourself when you go for a first date? For example. First date. Yeah, for a first date. Or when you start dating a person. Let's hear it from the female perspective. Alright, um, go ahead, Q. This man explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. usually we make the men do a lot of explaining, yeah. so I won't give the girls yeah. a hard time. Um, I think when it comes to dating apps back then when I was using it, right I notes. would naturally want to meet as soon as I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I think when you speak to someone over text versus when you meet them in person, it's it can be very, very different. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Imagine like talking for two, three weeks and then meeting that person and it's just bad. You have so much chemistry on text and then when you meet the person. Yeah, it's like awkward. Oh no. Or mm. like they they are just too touchy. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, Taking okay, striking right? that yeah. out. Notes, okay, <laughs> okay. I send you more tonight. Can. <laughs> send you more details. Like. Hey, we are talking tonight. How about you? Do you have any rules that you live by dating rules yeah actually like i made a lot of tiktok videos about dating because yeah. i feel like i've gone on many many dates okay yeah. so like the more people you date right the more be- the more things you add on your list i'm not even kidding okay like because like like you go with people then you be like oh actually this thing don't really like so after that it it's, it makes it worse because i become more picky okay so i you've brought this up several times now and you're self-aware that you yeah. are picky what is it exactly that you're picky about? Like, what must she have? What are these qualities? All right, welcome to my list. <laughs> okay, I'm ready for it. I want to help you. Okay. <laughs> right. Number one is uh, okay, these are not uh, these are not must haves, but like they are. Uh, it's good to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the perfect girl. Okay. One I'm is <laughs> one six seven cm tall. One six seven cm specifically. Yeah, that's the perfect height. One six six cm. Uh, plus minus one, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, why? Why? It's the perfect height, just nice, like the hand fits here, you know, like you kiss your neck, never strain, you walk side by side. Wait, you what's look your good. height? 181. Okay, so she needs to be 167. But what if it's a girl that's 160 oh, that's wearing heels? The girl that's 167 wear heels, she's gonna be your height. Yeah, but then, like, when we're at home, she's not wearing heels, right? Then oh. when she hugged me, that would be awkward. Okay, continue. This is number continue, one. Continue, yes. Okay. That's the first one. Yeah, uh. Okay, yeah, yeah. The interesting. Uh, spontaneous and adventurous. Right. I think it's because of my lifestyle. I like to do like stupid things. Okay. So, like, hey, next week, let's go Cebu, you know. Then we just go. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, third thing is uh, sporty. I feel like they need to be at least active in like the gym or like dance also can, you know. But like some sort of phys- physical activity. Right. Funny. Or at least she laughed at my jokes. Uh, okay. You know, like, so either one. Yeah, either one. No, That's um, the fifth one. That was yeah. the fifth uh, quality. Okay. Uh, must be quite smart. Controversial. Yeah. Controversial. Smart and controversial? No, I mean, uh, this is a controversial opinion. Oh, like, people, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, like, so she must be smart. I know that there are people that like trophy wives, like, like cannot really give her opinion, you know, just sit there, side, look pretty, oh, that kind of thing. Right. But I cannot. I want, mm-hmm. I want somebody that can like argue with Banter me. Banter with you. Yeah, we can like debate about okay. like current affairs. Wow, okay. Yeah, like they must be like well-read, like we can present thoughts, we, we can be critical about it. And she can have a different opinion from me, it's okay, but as long yeah. as she presents it in a way that's like logical, and then I can, oh yeah, I understand your point of view. I understand your point of view. Okay, then we shake hands, then we kiss. I, I feel like he's <laughs> had this entire thing played out in his head, like a whole drama in his yeah, head. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, a whole yeah. scene yeah, yeah, that yeah. just played out. Mm. Okay, and then anything else? Uh, yeah, I have. I uh, still have. <laughs> oh, still have. Okay, I, I'm listening. I'm listening. That was number six. Uh, yeah. Seven. Uh, like, she needs to be like a bit family oriented. Mm. Okay. Because I think I quite like my family. La, so I feel like she, she should quite like her family also. So that we can like have nice big family fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, she okay. must like dogs. Like, okay, she dog. must like dogs. Okay, okay, what if she doesn't like dogs? <laughs> But Burn. she's the perfect girl. Is it a, girl. Du- is it a deal breaker? On. Yeah. Yeah. But she's the perfect girl. She just doesn't like dogs. Yeah. Why? Why? My dog is so cute. Eh? Like, how can you not like dogs? No, maybe dogs? she has a fear of dogs. Then okay, we will she's cure allergic it. to dogs. <laughs> no, cannot. Oh, no. Cannot. But everything else perfect. Yeah. Cannot. All my clothes got dog fur one. It's like impossible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, we tried. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we tried. We tried to reason it out. Any more? Uh, pretty. Okay. Oh, it must be pretty also. That's it. Yeah. Seeing how, you know, um, you're living a single life mm. now. Of course, please stop us if it's too much to ask. Yeah. What about your intimate life? It's like, you know, you're not exactly in a relationship, but, you know, are you having fun outside? Is it like, 
the kind of thing where you enjoy. I feel like as girls, right, y'all can tell when a guy is trying to sleep with you, right? Oh, there's for the, sure. There's for a sure. stench. Oh, <laughs> big ass it stench. reeks, is it? Yeah, it okay. reeks. Like, it reeks. This guy just wants to get in bed with me. Yeah. Right. So uh, I don't sleep with people for the like sake of sleeping with people. Right. Doesn't mean I don't go out with you to like sleep with you. I right. go out with you to like maybe make you my wife. Oh. But then like if that <laughs> okay. doesn't work out, then after that like okay, we can have some casual fun and then right. like mm. ride then off into how? the sunset. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like alone. His, <laughs> his entire view is like a film, you know? Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. actually imagining it yeah. as a movie. Mm. Film student. Oh my yeah. god, it's like a before sunrise thing. You just want to like meet. Get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Get like, out before yeah. sunrise. Then, yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like you you like you go into the date, right? Like expecting here. So like wife quality. Then after that, she says some things. Then you're like, hmm, maybe date around for a while. Then after that, hmm, casual relationship. Then after that, hmm, I don't even want to send her home. Okay, but do you think, <laughs> okay. to back me up here, yes. okay, do you think that she could be feeling the same way about you? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, like, of course. She might be like, oh, okay, I'm slowly like checking this yeah. off my Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like this goes checklist. both ways, man. Right. Like they can like have the one to have nothing to do with me after I open my mouth. Right. Yeah. 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 So like like I totally understand. Yeah, they can they can ghost me or whatever. Okay. There's like no hum- hard feelings or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So in that case, do you feel like there was a big difference dating, let's say when you were younger, like in your teenage years, early 20s and all that versus now as you yes. know, you're approaching the adulting years as people like to call it, right? Yeah. Q, do you feel like there's a big difference dating when you're younger versus now? I think when we were younger, 17, 18, mm. it was very easy to find someone because um, school, school yeah. same community, right? Um, but obviously we wouldn't, the likelihood of meeting someone at work is quite low. It's true. No? Actually, disagree, agree. No, I, I, don't know. I, I mean, I just think about your whole team. They're all girls. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. true. Oh, they've got all these uh, camera people. Uh, they're not available, <laughs> yeah? It quite cute, no? It's not unavailable, yeah. yeah? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, don't eat where you shit. Okay. Uh, right? Uh, true, yeah. true. In comparison, I think now, like what Nick said, the older you get and the more people you date, the ten- you tend to be more picky. Yes. Only because you see the good and also the bad. Mm. And then obviously you obviously you want all the good parts. Yeah. And you the older you get also you wouldn't want to waste time. Yeah. So once you feel like someone is not it, you just move on to the next next person. Yes, yes. I yes. think dating app culture also has ruined the romance mm. side of things. And the whole we are disposable mm. concept. Um, also makes sense lah because the next person you swipe might be the, the better person, right? So I think that has ruined romance for me. Okay, so yeah. picking up from that, um, you know, you stating all these things and all, I think it's valid but have you ever thought that maybe the perfect, perfect person mm-hmm. for you or for us may not necessarily exist? Right. When I mentioned that I look for all the good things, I don't think I'm looking for the perfect person. Yeah. Um, it's just something that happens along the way. I don't believe the perfect person exists. You just need to make it work. Mm. Mm. Yeah, But it has to be a mutual thing. Mm. Mm. It can't just be a one-sided thing where I want to work it out and you don't want to work it out. Mm. Yeah, Yeah, I think like overall, it's like that list that we have is like just a guide. Like if there's a girl that's perfect but she's like 160, you know, I can learn to love her. But at the same time... I'm 160! I feel personally (laughs) offended by that. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you know, she will choose to wear heels when we go out and stuff like that. Right. Like, it's all a compromise, right? Okay. You know, this is just a joke, right? The 167 thing is just the easiest thing to reference. <laughs> yeah, I think when when I date, I date not for fun. Mm. I want to eventually, you know, be together with this yeah. person long term, right? So, that's why I'm... I wouldn't say I'm picky. I just have, like, my standards. Okay. Like, the bar is not low anymore. Mm. Yes, you know? yes, yes. No, yeah. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So, in, in the past, obviously, when we're dating in school, you're dating, like, fellow for fun, schoolmates yeah. or whatever. Like, okay, fun. Like, all mm. growing up together. We're all discovering ourselves. Yeah. But now, you're successful, career-driven people. That changes things also, right? Yeah. Do you feel? I think now, you would consider the fact that this person might be in your life for the next decade yeah. or 20 years, right? But when I was with my first boyfriend at 17, 18, I wouldn't think about marriage, you know? So at this point, because of the marriage concept or life partner concept, then that's why I tend to look out for the green flags more. Yeah. So is being single a red flag? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're here to kind of discuss that right mm. away. I don't think that it is necessarily because like you said, it's also a choice sometimes. Like, you know, you're not just like, oh, I'm single because I've got all these terrible qualities. Like you are dating. Mm. You are looking at people and asking people out, right? 
are you okay? Do you want to... <laughs> he looked a bit sad for a moment, you know. I was like, I felt it. I felt it. <laughs> As in, your question is whether being single for too long is a reflect of being yeah, single. Yeah, being single for too long. I think there are a few reasons. Mm. One, you sway. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. As in, simple, you sway. As in, you just haven't met the right person yet. Yeah. Right. No fate, no alignment. Mm. The second thing is, yeah, you're either too picky or too selective. The third one is, not you specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just it could be anyone yeah. watching yeah, this yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the third one is just unresolved issues. Like mm. personal issues that you haven't gotten through. Yeah. yeah. Because like, naturally, a lot of people just think that, oh, I'm very playboy. Like, every other walking female is like... Is it the way that you present yourself, you think? Or have you ever asked your friends why people think that of you? Partially, like, because I, I feel like I'm a bit more extroverted. So like naturally, I come off a bit more flirty even when I, know, I don't mean to. Yeah. Like there are guys that, that tell me why I go and flirt with their girlfriend. I'm like, yo, all I did was say hi. Mm. Yeah, you mm. know. Like, Hold up. So can I just ask, side note, do you have more female friends or male friends? Friends, I would say male. Acquaintance, I would say female. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. I don't hang out with the females. Mm. They just happen to be around me. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, in, in the sense of that, you know, I saw you being a little bit contemplative earlier. Mm. Do you think that in the eight years of being single, like what have you learned about yourself that you might want to apply in your future relationship if you find a serious one? I think it's the comparison between me and the, like for example, my classmates mm. that are getting married and having kids. Mm. Uh, and I just think like, I don't want to settle for less than yeah. what I think I deserve. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like a lot of them are like having like problems or like I literally have one girl friend mm -hmm. that uh, like she own self says she's settled. Like she own self put herself in a red flag situation. Oh. She doesn't like the husband's family for example. Doesn't like right. husband's friends. But she choose to settle down with him because her priority is really just, just to start a life. Right. A family life. And, and it's just too is, tiring to date someone again or meet yeah, someone new. Her, he's good enough. Mm. Right. Like just like that. But I don't want good enough. I want yeah. like good or great or yeah. like best you know. No I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. And I think that also sometimes like worries my family in a way because mm. like I said you know I'm the only kid I have no siblings whatsoever so everything's like banking on me right they're yeah, like yeah. when are you going to get married when are you going to have a, give us a grandkid blah blah they, they kind of gave up asking me after mm. a while but I, I do feel what you are saying as well mm. I, I think it's a very valid point for you do you feel I think I feel quite similar to how you feel mm. the whole idea of not settling for less and I don't want to be in a miserable marriage or like yeah, relationship. You enjoy yeah. your life every day, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a fear actually. Like I don't want to be with the wrong person for like forever. Yeah. You know? You were single but dating for a few years. What have yeah. you learned about yourself that you think you can apply right. in the future? I think when I was younger or generally, I'm quite emotional at my core. Like I'm quite a sensitive person. That was my, I think I would say my red flag. Mm. Um, I'm embracing that part of me, but I think it can be improved. Mm. So, in my next relationship, if I ever have one... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you will, girl. <laughs> yes. I will, I will be actively, you know, like, being more self-aware about that habit of mine. Mm. Yeah. And making sure I communicate healthily. Yeah. yeah and properly to the, my partner. I mean, that sounds like a lot of introspection mm. that you did already. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure about your mm. own personal family or mm -mm. life or whatever also, but do you feel that looking and observing the relationships around you, that also affects how you think and feel? Yeah. 100%. I, yeah. 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 Like, divorce rates are quite high these oh. days, yeah. right? Yeah. And because of that, it also instills that fear in me. That but, I have to choose the right person. But some people actually, funny enough, I've spoken to some um, friends who, mm. and they're really young, they like annulled after a year or something. Mm. I'm not saying that that's a right or wrong way of dealing with things, but it's also seen as a solution. Mm. Like some of them are like, oh, if it doesn't work, there's this solution. Yeah. But then there's another camp that's like, you shouldn't look at that as the solution to like, you know, a mm. failing relationship, especially a marriage, yeah. right? Yeah. I think now it just seems like the norm. Yeah. But back then, you're not supposed to separate. But do you believe that maybe for every life stage, you deserve a different kind of okay. relationship? Oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. another topic that I was thinking about as well. Ah, do right. you think that you are meant to just have one partner for your whole life? Humans, I, I think, naturally are not supposed yeah. to. Mm. It's a social construct. Mm. But personally, <laughs> in my ideal world, I have my, a life partner. Yeah. One yeah. person. So for you, I'm sensing that you're thinking every phase of life may call for a different 
flavor. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. La, I'm not sure. La. But I feel like that's what friends are meant to do to help you fill the gap so that yeah. your, your that one partner is that partner, right? Yeah. And then every other gap that you have in your life, I mean, other than like intimacy. Everyone la. serves a different purpose yeah, basically yeah. in your life. For example, if like I have a girlfriend that's not sporty, okay. then after that, I will be active with friends. my bros or whatever. Mm. Hey, so you answer your own question, what? Like, if the girl doesn't tick all your boxes, you look for some of these qualities or activities with your friends. Yeah, yeah, but preferably they tick most. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. But most right. importantly, one, six, seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, want, they want, like, I, I cannot ask someone to carry her list, for the rest though. of her life. Yeah. That's the top of the list. Okay, so in that case, um, before we wrap things up, how has your perception of love changed over the years? I used to see love as this very fairy tale, yeah. romantic thing where you fall in love with someone in school. And then after that, you spend like the next 70 years together, have like three kids, uh, have a dog or something like that. And then you live a merry, happy life. But as you grow old and you have like interests and stuff like that, then you start to discover like facets of yourself that you want to explore or maybe even go like way deeper in. Mm. And then after that, love takes a backseat because it involves somebody else. And every other thing, you can kind of do it by yourself. Yeah. So like... To me, it just slowly dropped down like the priority list. Mm. Okay, mm. how about you, Q? When I was younger, I, I always viewed love as this... In, in Mandarin, we always say hong hong lie lie, which is like very passionate. Hong oh. hong lie lie. Hong hong lie lie, you know? Lie lie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. it's like I just very passionate. so shit. I passionate, like, you know, like... Break close off time, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe not, not... Oh, no, 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 no. He no. was doing that! I was like, um, I have no idea what... No, no, hong it's, hong lie lie it's, it's okay. Uh, come out of the it's elevator, just like, you know, then the like, hotel lobby, like, push there, kiss, then after that, slam the other side. Okay, that's not how I'm imagining it. Then cannot find the hotel key card, then after that, swipe. No, yeah. it was not we just walk into yeah. another film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, just passionate and like, it's just very, very exciting at the start. And I, I think at this age, I still think, I, I mean, I thought that it should be that way. It should be chaotic and like exciting and fun. But <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> I mean, I've come to realise that it can be toxic if it's always like... Correct, correct, yeah. correct. correct. I get and that, I think I get it's that. because I'm, I was used to that. Right. In my last relationship. And when there is peace and there is calm... You're like, what's I wrong? Think, yeah, is it like, I, I can't fall in love with this person. Is that is that it? Like, is this just it, you know? Mm. So, I think I'm trying to understand that love should be calm. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. And love should be peaceful and safe. With occasional fireworks. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a completely like, uh, it opens up a different conversation altogether, mm. right? Like, how do you keep that alive mm. in a relationship that you've been in for... For yeah. years, I guess. How do you? Yeah. How let's let's ask us. Oh my god, this is another episode all together. <laughs> okay, you want to ask me? Okay, personally, I feel like uh, I'm very good at first dates. Okay. But I'm not very good at uh, maintaining yes. a relationship. Right, right, right. So, so how, how do how do we do that? Okay. <laughs> I can't give you the advice in like one line or so. He's so eager and earnest to learn. I cannot take him seriously at this point. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> No, okay, so for my current partner and I, we're still together at this time of recording. So hopefully we continue <laughs> to be this way. I hope he doesn't watch that either. But I have to say, like, this is my longest relationship so far, okay? How we're many years? Four and a half years. Wow. Yeah, okay. longest relationship so far. And he's a little bit older, yes. But I think it also comes with that sense of security and maturity. He's not insecure about the people that I hang out with or like, you know, if I Joking. have to... <laughs> yeah. And they're friends, in fact, yeah. you know. And I have some male friends as well. He's okay with them. Like, he makes friends with them. He's not insecure when like, like let's say I have to travel overseas for work mm. or something, right? So I think that is number one, like, on my priority list. You are secure in yourself. But in regards to like, the whole fireworks thing mm. along the years, I cannot really explain that, but I still feel the same way about him now as I did like when we first met. Wow. And he would still like make an effort to tell me like how gorgeous I am every day yeah. or like he would just remind yeah, me like how much just... he loves me every day. And um, the physical side of things good as well. So like that's nice. going great. Yeah. Great. Which I think also sometimes you got to put effort in. If I'm not wrong, it's a scientific thing. Please don't quote me. I'm like the last person to quote on when it comes to scientific facts. Mm -hmm. But I swear I read this somewhere that your sexual parts get tired of each other after a while. Like you get bored of each other after a while. As in physically, you get tired of each other. Yeah, physically you get bored of each other. So every two years get a boob job. No! Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I think it's because like... You, have you keep to, like, doing the same thing. Yeah. So ah. you have to like yeah. change it up or yeah. spice it up. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Spice it up. <laughs> okay. okay. 
Yeah. So it's hard to really explain in, right. in one seating mm. how to do that. But it's a process. That's not to say that there were many points as well that we wanted to call it quits oh, okay. along the way. As with every couple, they'll probably face that kind of um, situation. Mm. And how do you... Sorry, one last question. Yeah, please, and how do, how do you deal with those moments? So, you know, like I used to be very fiery. I used to just like want to throw in the towel and like move on to the next guy or whatever, right? But because I, I genuinely see that there's a future with my current partner that I don't want him to just like walk out the door and then that's it. Because I think for him, he has, mm. we have had this conversation, like he doesn't need to get married. He doesn't need to have kids or like want, you know. So we're kind of on the same page in regards to that. And we both recognize that, hey, even if we not necessarily want kids or want in the future, we still enjoy each other's companionship so much. And I think the number one question that I ask when I'm in a big argument and if it's close to a breakup is, will my life be drastically different without this person? Mm. And usually the answer is yes. Like, I think my life would be drastically different without him. Mm. So that's that's the one question I will ask myself. Okay, next time you ask yourself that. Okay, yeah. So now I just want to focus real quick before we wrap it up. What are some of the benefits of being single? And what have you learned? Sometimes when you work on yourself, and just, you know that you succeeded on your own. That's a great feeling. Yeah, and I think you tend to be more grateful about the other people in your life as well. Like mm. your friends, your family. You don't really need that partner. Mm. Yeah. I honestly think the one the one answer, the one definite answer is just freedom. Mm. You don't have to report to anyone else. But sometimes I would like to go home and yeah, to someone. And, and share just like, it with someone, right? Yeah, tell them about my day. Like, I obviously have those moments, yeah. but recently I'm embracing, you know, my singlehood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually my ideal life is uh, me effing shit up around the world, right? Then after that, but I come back to like this, like, woman. Okay. Yeah, like, woman. to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, I think being single, you get to explore way more things about yourself. Mm. Firstly, there's the, the time involved. Uh, like, you don't have to like, meet someone every other day or stuff like that. You don't have to like, take into consideration things like location, for example, like I could go to Bali for six months right now mm. uh, without caring about someone else's feelings, mm. you know. Yeah. yeah, I can do whatever I like. One, uh, basically, like I have no partners that are uh, restrictive. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, freedom is the number one thing. There's one thing that I saw on TikTok. Yes. It's basically that um, as singles, you get to fall in love for the first time again. Mm. <sighs> but then will you find yourself like always chasing butterflies? Uh, no, not exactly. Okay. But it's just uh, kind of like you know, the grass is greener yeah. on that side. On our side right now is that we get to experience falling in love for the first time again. Yeah. Oh my god, do you think it's a, it's a problem when you're single for too long, you're, being used, you're too used to being single? Okay, honestly, right, for me, right, I'm a bit used to being single. Like, mm. even when I'm dating someone, right, like, I won't like, oh, report like what I do, mm. you know. You want like your own space and your yeah, own... Yeah, I'm just like too used, I'm an autopilot to do everything by myself. Actually, like, things like, you know, I, like yeah. sometimes you buy groceries or you need to do an errand. Like, the girl actually wants to follow you one. But yeah. then, like, you just never ask because like, I'm used to like just doing it. Why well, I cannot do it myself? So, let me just, like, put it out there before we wrap it up. Like, because um, back it comes back to me being an only child, I feel. I don't know why it always comes back to that. But I'm so used to doing everything myself. I'm used to having my own room, my own space. Everything's mine. Like, you know, there's not much sharing involved in my entire childhood, right, growing up. And also, like, as I grew up and got a job, got a car, I drive myself everywhere, I do everything myself. I don't need anyone to help me out. Mm. So it also takes someone to be able to take a character like mine because I'm also exactly like that. Mm. Like, I don't need to be like, hey, I'm going to go do this now or do that. I just do it and I'm like, okay, I did this, this, this and that today. So I think you will find someone that <sighs> is going to be okay with that, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Mm. How did it become an episode of me sharing a little bit more than usual? We we're, just need some tips, man. Yeah, we're just learning. <laughs> this uh, podcast is all about learning as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. And to you watching and listening now, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Men Explain. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to like, share and subscribe. And if you want to hear about other things, comment. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>